Join us tonight as we give you an in-depth look into the growing adult entertainment industry. Most girls that are escorting, they're trying to flaunt their body and she's got on bedroom slippers and a hoodie. Like that could be a sign of a minor. Hey sweetie, can I give you something? Can you take this? Once you understand what's happening in the strip clubs, for real, and your part in it, you're not gonna wanna participate. I had created a lifestyle centered around the industry. I mean, I was a high school dropout. I didn't have a degree. The strip club was funding my lifestyle. I'll use my body to get what I want, and it, and it made sense to me. You first get in, you think you, you can, can until you learn what you have to do to stay. Some of the rooms will have like a cot in there and an ATM machine. Yes. And it would just go on for hours and hours and man after man after man. And for her to be online, Selling herself is a, at risk, like she would end up missing like one of those girls are. I haven't even walked a year yet, so it's been maybe, maybe six months, say. We just want to be aware that there, we could be talking to a minor. Hello. Hello, I speak to Devin. usually give out about 150 bags per outreach, sometimes more. It just depends on how many donations we get. And we will hit probably six or seven clubs. We hope to give them out and not to bring any home with us. Yeah. Here we go. I got this. Three people I share, You know, because you can't put prostitution, you can't put stripping on your resume. What we'll tell them is, look, when you're ready, you want help tonight, or if you want help in two years from now, just save our number and call us. We try to offer them respect. Look, look, we know this is a business, but we just want to come in here and just help the girls that you know need help. And the clubs are receptive to that. There's probably only like three or four girls here. There's usually not that many. They might do massages, but a lot of times they also do extra things, um, extra sexual services. And then they'll, some of the rooms will have like a cot in there and an ATM machine. Yes. And you will see that when you mm -hmm. come. Hi, we have some gifts for you, ladies. Thank you. How many do you have here? Two. Two. Okay, we got an extra. Okay. Thank you have a good day. Good night. Thank you. Because if they get cash, it just shows an ATM charge. But if they did it on their credit card, their wives might see a charge to an Asian spa and that might get them busted. And then we'll go hit a couple spots for girls that are, you know, on the street that might be in the you know in heavy prostitution areas. This little spot, there's girls that hang out here. We're just gonna because sometimes the truckers will come back here. Hey, sweetie, can I give you something? She can't take it. Can you take this? She can't. That fear of having to make a certain amount of money keeps them out on the street until they make that money. Mm. Now, this is the bag that she'll have for the, you know, the street. Mm -hmm. I have like a blanket. I have like, um, you know, body wash. Um, toothpaste, toothbrush. And we picked up a girl one night and when we got there, she had ran from her pimp and she had a baby with her. And we um, got to the McDonald's where she was at and her pimp was there and he was circling the car, like screaming and hollering and cussing at us while we were getting his, the girl and the baby in the car. And um, here's two girls right here. We just, but we just wow. kept doing what we, um, Kept doing what we oh, we gotta focus to do. Did you see those two girls? Mm -hmm. You see that one girl? She looked young. Up here. Car. In that one of the cars. That was a car. And seeing the girls not any longer with him. 
So he dropped her off in here to work. Well, I want to oh. see she went into one of these rooms. Look, there's, there's one right there. there. There's one right there. Hmm. And then you see a little child, child's bicycle over here. Watch your, uh, watch your cameras, please. Can we give you something, sweetie? Yeah, How are you? Hi. What's your name? Diamond. Diamond. I'm Casey. Hi, Casey. Uh, there, make sure, uh, let me make sure there's a card in there. Yeah. Uh, Some information okay. about For Sarah, okay? Yes, you be sir. safe, okay? All right, thank you. Right, you're welcome. And you just get stuck in this vicious cycle of thinking that you're getting ahead in life, but it really, uh, it destroys you. And people see a woman on a street corner if they have never had this conversation, then they just think, look at her, look at that prostitute on the side of the street, looking for the next John, that's all they see. They don't see the man standing behind her. They don't see that. I was trying to go to school, I enrolled in a community college, but when I came to visit my sister, when she was working at the Gold Club, um, that's when my whole life changed. When I came to visit her, the manager at the door, he stopped me when I came into the club. And he said, you're hired. And I told him, I'm like, I'm not here for a job. And he said, you don't want to make $1,000 a night. I was really naive to that whole industry. I, um, I gave it a try and I fell right into the money. And, and that's what got me and sucked into the industry. It wasn't the drugs or the alcohol or the men, it was the fast money. And the very first night I worked, I made like $600 that first night. The second night it was 800 and I've made up to anywhere from 10,000 in one night while I was dancing. We would like to be able to fix their problems in 24 hours. There's no need for no. But we can't. Um, and so we try to be in there for the long haul and just be that long-term friendship for them. And then we also have a scholarship program. So with me being a high school dropout, I realize how important education is. And, and so many girls say they go into stripping to pay for college, but Nine out of 10 don't do it. That might be that one out of 10 that actually goes to college, but most girls that go into the sex industry start out with that idea of going to college, but they realize, well, why would I go to college when I can make this kind of money? But we try to encourage them to think about what they can do when they leave the sex industry. Brunswick, is it Brunswick? And they have Atlanta pulled up. We will look for in these ads is number one, we can tell she's in a hotel. Mm -hmm. So when we, and you, there's usually a whole bunch of pictures and sometimes they're very provocative and sometimes they're very simple. Like that's a simple picture. Mm -hmm. So we would track it. We put the post ID number, we put her age, her location, if she has any tattoos. Um, and when we talk to her, if she does speak to us, we try to make sure that we talk fast. Mm -hmm. If she sounds young, if she, you know, sounds like she's high, mm -hmm. like we would document some of that stuff. Just okay. so if she calls back, we can remember her or if there's any concerns that we might need to get law enforcement involved. Okay. So no matter what, if they cuss us out, hang up on us, or don't answer, we send them a text message. And her name is Boo. Boo for at least. Boo mm -hmm. Oh my God. Hello. Hello, may I speak to Devin? Yes, hi. Hi, Devin. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. My name is Sayuri, and I'm calling them with a group called For Sarah, and we reach out to women uh, who are um, online. Um, and I came across your ad today and I just wanted to introduce myself to you and uh, get your permission to send you some information about what we do. Uh, we have a scholarship program and we have other resources and things for women who are in the industry. Uh, is there any way I can send it to you? Sure. Awesome. Sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Do you work at uh, any clubs in Atlanta? Um, not now. I'm actually from Michigan. Okay. Okay. 
Which which club? Have you been to any other clubs yet? I haven't been to no clubs out here at all. Okay. Okay, are you going to school? Um, no, not at the moment, but I have a realtor class towards the end of the month that I'm going to. Okay. That's good. Okay. Awesome. Check out Sarah. Okay, we'll check out for Sarah, and I'm going to send you that information. In the, in the text message, you can just tap the link and go straight to the website, okay? All right, thank you. All right, have a good day. You're welcome. You too. Bye. 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 She sounded like young. Yeah, she sounded like she's so real. She's notate that she's going to real estate. Real estate. Um, <laughs> it got to you. Ah! All right, I'm back. I'm back. Okay, so this young lady I'm calling. Why did it get to you? Because um, she says she's 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 looking at going into dancing. Like she's online and she's looking at going into strip clubs. So it's kind of like, you know, a lot of women, they don't feel like they're connected, but th this just connected it. You will get pulled in. You will have a, you will, by the time you leave, yes, you will have an addiction to something, whether it be drugs, alcohol, or sex, or addiction to money. You will have some type of addiction that is feeding that thing so that it's distracting you from living in your purpose. As a child, I used to win dance contests a lot. I used to earn money for dancing. When I heard the um, contest, $500 contest, you know, I'm like, oh my God, when I grow up, I'm gonna enter that contest and win that $500, you know, so. But what they were advertising was amateur night at strip clubs, but I didn't know that until I got there. Like, I didn't know until I arrived, but, and I started when I was 18. When I went to the club that I actually ended up working at, it was during the daytime and there was nobody there except two people. And the woman walked past him in a bikini. And I looked at her and said, oh, I can beat her. I know I can dance better than her. But she pointed at him and he did the sign of disco. So she took off her bikini and I was like, what's happening? So she danced through that song, mostly with her back toward him, but she turned around a few times. And so when the song was over, he did like this. So she danced for the next song that was on. And I was really confused about what was going on, but after that second song, he gave her $20. And that's when I figured out that everybody gets paid and it wasn't a competition and it was over for me. Like I was ready to dance right then. And when I saw that everybody got paid, I was excited about it. When I did my first dance for a customer, I was horrified and I was terrified because he expressed to me that I reminded him of his daughter, which I didn't need to know. And also it was to a very slow song, like an R&B type bedroom type song, which I didn't envision myself dancing to. It starts as a, a deficiency in another area, like attention. I don't get enough attention, so I'm just gonna sit in his face all night and I just love it. Now I'm feeling powerful. You see, like the girl was talking about her power. I'm like, you have no power. <laughs> it's not power, you're feeling Hello. Hey, this is Casey. This is Casey. Who, uh, who am I speaking with? Okay, well we are with an organization, so basically we call girls that work online. And we had texts, we were just texting, reaching out to you today just to give you some information about our organization. We have like a scholarship program and it's for women and girls and we just wanted to see if we can text that to you. Yes, absolutely. Are you in school? Um, no, but I'm currently trying to get enrolled. Okay, what are you going to go to school for? Um, I'm just hurry up and um, get into beauty school and then I'll go back for a dental assistant, but awesome. I just need to get something. Well, I don't, like, I used to be in the industry. I've been out of it 14 years, and so we just, we do an outreach into the strip clubs, and then we also do an outreach where we call girls that work online. So, you know, we're not here to judge anything. Um, we're just here just to offer you some support and encouragement, just if you ever need someone to talk to, if you're ever in a crisis, you can call this hotline number back. Normally we give out about $1,500. Do you have kids? I do, I have two children. Two children? How old are they? Um, one and seven. Oh wow, you got your hands full, seven year old. Well, is there anything that I can pray for you about? I mean, that you might need? 
prayer, just encouragement? Stress. To what is it? Stress. stress. What, can I pray yes. with you right now? Okay, I'll pray real quick for you. All right, dear Jesus, I just thank you for Maya. I thank her, um, her sweet spirit, Lord, for calling back and just being so receptive to us. Give her peace of mind and comfort to know that you are with her and that you're going to guide her and strengthen her, Lord. And we just pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you have a blessed day, and I'm gonna, um, we'll touch base with you, okay? And you just give us a call, and you take care of those okay. babies. Okay. They yes, need their I, mama. I know. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> awesome. This is a different kind of outreach. What about my own daughter? Yeah. To be a, a supportive person in their life that can listen to them even if they do go back to the industry and just kind of be there and uh, be available for them for when they're making that transition because it is a process. It does not happen fast. It's hard to transition because a lot of stuff that you get away with as a stripper, you can't get away with at work doing anything else. But when you're working in an office, customer service, when somebody upsets you, you can't cuss them out and just go to the next customer like in a strip club. When we make calls, we always know that there's gonna be at least one girl that stands out. And I believe she was that one. And it really just lets you know that you weren't wasting your time, that these girls really do need our help, they need our love, they need um, someone to care about them. And who knows, she was, she was stressed and having a bad day, obviously, but she listened to what we had to say, and and who knows what might come from this. Maybe she, she could have been trying to kill herself tonight. We don't know that. I had nothing left in me, no energy. And so November 9th, 2012, I decided that I was going to take my life. I was a young, struggling mom. I mean, so that's the way I was sucked in. And so I see a lot of that too, just trying to support their kids and just trying to support their self and tr trying to get through college and end up in a lifestyle that they just, it's, it's hard to get out of. It's almost impossible to get out of. I always say it was that, just the hell of my life because I was getting robbed I just, I would black out for days. Um, and there was a moment in there where I had a, a girlfriend that uh, sold us, she and I, on Craigslist and uh, ended up in Key West. And I, I think I took a glance into my life and was like, you, you just sold yourself on Craigslist. You just, what has gotten into you? I started working in a strip club in Atlanta when I was 22, and the down world spiral just sped up. And when I started doing that, I remember driving to the club and like crying out saying, you know, I, I don't want to do this, but I have to do this because at some point I started believing that that's all I knew how to do, that that's all I could do because it started at 12 that I thought I was useless and I had zero self-esteem. So I started dancing. When they got raped at 13 or sexually assaulted at 13, they get stuck in that mentality as a child. And when they're 40 years old trying to get help, they realize, well, wait a minute, I got PTSD. I'm struggling mentally and emotionally. So a lot of times people want to give up on them because they're adult, but they don't realize that they started when they were a child, that they have a trauma that they have to heal from. I just got caught up in that whole circle of um, the lie that the industry tells you and that you're getting ahead in life, but really you're creating a lifestyle that is centered around the sex industry. My grandmother that I loved very much, that was a good person in my life, that was a stable person in my life, she passed away. 
And when she died, we were at her funeral. And I kind of took a second and stepped back and I see everybody crying. I really started asking God, am I gonna die just being a stripper? I knew I wanted to accomplish something in life, but I felt like I was a failure. When I went on into the club and got dressed to go to work, I sat at the bar in this particular spot and just started looking around the club. And normally clubs are smoky and crowded, but that night it was empty and clear. And it just hit me, I'm done. And so I went back to the dressing room, told the house mom that I quit. And when I was walking out, I emptied out my locker. And when I was leaving, one of the girls stopped me and she says, you're never coming back, are you? And I was like, I hope not. She goes, you're never coming back. And I walked out that club, but I could not just not go back. My sister was still in the industry. All my friends were dancers. What confirmed it was I found out I was pregnant with my first child ever, and that is Sarah. And so when I found out I was pregnant, I knew that I could not go back to the industry. There were so many girls that were like me that felt stuck in and so we just started going and doing strip club outreaches and just going into the strip clubs. And we would go in and just give gifts to the girls and basically just love them where they're at. Casey asked me, I didn't even ask her for the scholarship. She asked me if there was something that she can help me with. That literally meant the world to me during that time in my life. And then when she presented an opportunity for me to make money uh, another way, and pay for it, I was just like, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and I was um, really humbled by that, and I was very thankful. Even if they're still stripping or prostituting, they can still apply for a scholarship. So with the scholarship, we give that out quarterly, and we've given out, we gave out over 10,000 this year, and then we're hoping to double it next year. And it's, it's just to encourage them to go back to school, try something. The first time I got the scholarship, I went uh, and I got recertified to be a real estate agent. I got my real estate license back. For Sarah paid for the test and the, the license once I passed the test. And the second time, it was to fund Scriptures for Strippers. And it is a guide to the Bible for women who are dancers. I got my stuff together and I put it all together and I'm, I remember um, there was my, my best friends that I worked with and I was telling them, I was like, I'm just really sad. Right? I was like, are you not sad? Does this place not make you sad? I remember like six girls I was talking to and then I was like, try, like telling them by, you know, and, and I just said to myself, I'm just gonna wreck my car on I-75 and I'll drive off the bridge and it'll just be over, it'll be done. And I had my stuff like, I was going out the door and I seen the church ladies come in and um, I hated those church ladies and I didn't want to talk to them. We know that most of the time the girls, they're not going to leave with us that night. We go in to plant seeds and a lot of times we're just planting the seed and other people might see the, the fruit of that seed. And they come in and they like circle the room and I like, I'm gonna make a dart for the door. <laughs> and my, my now mentor, she comes over and uh, she's like, hey, how are you? And they kind of knew me because they had been coming in for the past year, but I was usually drunk. So like, I had never got to know any of these ladies. And she comes over and she's like, hey, how are you? And I, I was so rude and I just was like, you don't want to know how I'm doing. There's more girls like Rachel in the club and that's why it's so important on what we do is to at least show up because you never know whose life you're going to touch that night. She asked me if she could pray for me and I let her pray for me and um, I remember being so embarrassed that she was praying for me in the strip club. And to know that one of our team members prayed with her, that prayer helped her change her mind. That's so, that's empowering. I say a mustard seed of hope. I'm talking about a tiny bit of hope. I felt like there was just a little bit and I thought to myself, we exchanged numbers and I forgot to mention that, but I thought to myself, it may be that she can help me, but I didn't have a clue how she was going to help me. 
So I drove home, I made it past one bridge, and I made it past a couple more, and I stopped at my house, and it was so empty. There was like nothing in it. Nothing. I don't even know to this day what happened to all my stuff. I'm sure I got robbed, but it's like over time, just the, everything had went away. And I just looked around and I was like, Do you, is this how you want to live? It's really heartbreaking to know that she was going to commit suicide, that, you know, that she was considering that. But so many girls, that's so many stories of a lot of girls in the industry that, um, or that feel stuck in that industry. When a woman is in transition from the strip club, it is going to be some of the worst times of their life. But there's more to life than hustling. There's more to life than pimping. There's more to life than money, sex, and drugs. There's so much more. And once you break out of that, you'll see what I'm talking about. But you can't see it until you just step out in faith and try it. We want the women that are struggling, the women that you know that this club has just, they can't be in the industry anymore. It's gonna destroy, it's gonna kill them. We want those women. I want for you to try to catch the concept that you are a multifaceted person mm -hmm. and that you have more than one use. Mm -hmm. and you can do more than one job. I want you to think about why you were created in the first place. And I'm not judging you for what you're doing now, but I want you to ask yourself, am I living in that purpose? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing with my life? Thank you.